lost my music. It disappeared. I don't know where it went. Come on. Well, y'all are going to have to listen to me hum. Because my music disappeared. Come on. There we go. Dr. Judy Morgan. Eventually. I don't know how to do that. Okay. It's going to be one of those technical difficulty days, I think. Started our morning with Forrest running around, barking his full head off for half an hour. I don't know what he's barking at either. The boy needs joggy downers. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Kidney Disease Week, um, where we're going to uh, spend a week discussing what the kidneys are, what they do, why they fail, how they fail, and how we deal with that, and how we hopefully can treat that, um, and see if we can help uh, some pet owners, because I know this is a huge problem for both cat and dog owners. And um, it has hit home for us because Stuart's lab work from last week showed that his kidneys are not real happy. Um, and in his case, it's because he's on uh, the diuretic called torsamide. And uh, it's secondary to his heart failure and, and other problems. So uh, it's, it can be very frustrating to deal with this disease and uh, challenging, to say the least. So... Um, so another common term for kidney disease is renal failure. Kidneys equals renal. Uh, kidney failure, renal insufficiency. You may uh, see it uh, abbreviated as CKD for chronic kidney disease or AKD, acute kidney disease. So there's tons of names for it. Um, and so when the kidneys aren't working well, it affects all the organ systems in the body. It's not unfortunately we get very uh, tunnel vision and we kind of look at it that things and say well my dog's got kidney disease I got to focus on kidney disease and, and we forget that oh yeah while we're focusing on the kidney disease we have to remember uh, that we have to deal with the heart and we have to deal with the liver and we have to deal with the pancreas which is a huge issue um, with these animals with kidney disease as well so uh, if you're not familiar with where the kidneys are located, they're kind of uh, right along, one on either side of the spine, right at the back of the rib cage. So um, when your animal has a physical exam, the veterinarian should do a good palpation of the abdomen. Now on a 100 pound dog, that's a little bit trickier, but on uh, particularly cats and small to medium sized dogs or dogs who are not overweight, it is possible for your veterinarian to palpate the kidneys. And I, I had someone that emailed me once and they said their cat had developed these huge lumps right behind the rib cage that they could kind of feel underneath the skin. And those two huge lumps that they were feeling were actually the kidneys. The kidneys were really huge on this cat and it had lymphoma of the kidneys which is something that we do see in kitty cats. So um, normally you would not be able to feel the kidneys in your animal, uh, but a, I, I 
am very good at abdominal palpation. It's something that I actually enjoy doing on all my animals. And so a, a veterinarian who does a lot of palpation will be able to tell you the kidneys feel normal in shape and contour, depending, again, depending on the size of the animal. But the kidneys feel normal in shape and contour, or they one feels smaller than the other, or they have, they have a rough surface, they're pitted, or they're smooth. So there's a lot of information that can be gleaned just by <clears throat> using our hands to feel the kidneys. So uh, the kidneys are, are highly vascular. They have a huge network of blood vessels because their function is to filter the blood, conserve water and retain that back in the body, conserve electrolytes and keep the pH balance of the, the body uh, under control, and then to filter the waste products out and send them out in the urine. So if the kidneys are not functioning correctly, then maybe they're not conserving water, so we end up with dehydration. Uh, if the animal is drinking and urinating a lot, the electrolytes can get washed out uh, so that we can end up with low potassium, low chloride, low sodium. Um, so animals can survive with only one kidney, and it's amazing how many times in practice we would take an x-ray or do an ultrasound and go, huh, this one was only born with one kidney. So there's a lot of animals running around out there that only have one kidney and we don't even realize it, but their kidney function is normal because they can survive with one kidney. So if an animal is, um, is seemingly healthy and uh, their kidneys suddenly fail, that is acute kidney failure. Those animals become sick very quickly over a period of a few days they will go from seemingly healthy to vomiting, diarrhea, not eating, uh, bad breath. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but we generally will see acute kidney failure from toxins, possibly from trauma or shock, um, uh, or infection. So uh, toxins that we are definitely concerned about would be grapes, raisins, antifreeze, poisoning, uh, excess vitamin D. So we had all those pet food recalls a couple years ago uh, with excess vitamin D supplementation in the diets that caused a lot of animals to go into kidney failure. Um, and rat poison, uh, the form, the one that contains uh, cholecalciferol, which is basically a vitamin D, um, that can cause acute kidney failure as well. Uh, severe urinary tract infections, and this is why it's so important to monitor the urine and make sure that your animal does not have a urinary tract infection because a severe urinary tract infection that might start in the bladder could actually ascend up or move upward to the kidneys and cause kidney failure. So one of the things that we will look at when we uh, determine that an animal has decreased kidney function is I always want an ultrasound. I want to see what the kidneys look like. I want to see what the bladder looks like because we can tell a lot about the stage of disease by our imaging. We don't see as much on x-ray as we do with ultrasound, so ultrasound is definitely preferred. But I always want a urine culture. If I have an animal who is diagnosed with um, kidney disease, I want a culture. I want to know if there's bacteria there that could be affecting the kidneys that need to be treated. Um, so with an acute kidney failure, the symptoms will worsen rapidly over a period of days. Oh, no, go away. Somebody's trying to call me and interrupted my Instagram. How dare they? Okay. Um, all right. So the bad news is that kidney tissue does not regenerate. So once a functional kidney unit called a nephron, it's the little filter system, once it dies, it doesn't come back. We can't make it come back. Can we improve lab values? Absolutely. Can we make the animal feel better? Yes. But can we regenerate those nephrons, those kidney tubules? No. Once they're gone, they're gone. Versus liver disease, when we get around to talking about that at some point, liver regenerates. So we like things that regenerate. Bowel cells regenerate, but kidney cells do not regenerate. So once they're killed, they're gone. So really early diagnosis is a, a key factor with these so that we can slow that progression of disease or try to put a halt to it. Good news is uh, animals can survive on 10% kidney function. So 
even though we may not diagnose the problem until 75% of the kidney tubules, the nephrons have been destroyed, uh, that still leaves us 25% to work with, which means we still have some moving room. Uh, so it's really critical, and this is why I talk about this so much, that we have lab work run routinely on our animals. We know what their baseline is. Um, we had a little dog in practice that they wanted to get spayed. The dog was three years old, We a dog uh, seemingly very healthy. They had no indications of any problems at all. We did pre-op lab work for the spay, and the dog's BUN and creatinine, which are indicators of kidney function, were through the roof. And the owners actually got really angry at us and said, there's no way my dog is in kidney failure. Your tests are wrong. We reran the tests. Still the same. Their dog was born with a genetic problem of the kidneys that nobody knew about. And the dog was so used to it, the dog was just living with it and with these horrible lab results, eating normally, acting normal. So those labs are critically important so that you know what is the normal baseline for your animal and you pick things up early. Um, okay. Doo, doo, doo. So congenital things uh, like that would be something like polycystic kidney disease that we can see. Um, okay, so if your animal has acute kidney failure, uh, treatment early is crucial. Otherwise, uh, they, they may not make it through because they will deteriorate very, very quickly. Um, treatment usually, and we'll talk about this later on, but usually it's um, IV fluids, trying to really flush things through the system, supportive medications and supplements. And again, we'll, try, we'll talk about those later. So the difference between acute kidney failure and chronic kidney disease is that with chronic disease, it kind of sneaks up on you. It can be slow to come on. It can be slow for them to show the symptoms. Uh, but it's basically the result of degenerative changes in the kidney that affects its ability to function properly. Um, it is very common as our pets get older because it comes on gradually. Um, and the, like I said, there is no cure for kidney disease in pets. And I said this in an article and I was um, criticized for saying uh, as a holistic veterinarian that we can't cure kidney disease. The thing is we can't. Once they, they, they've lost those cells, they do not regenerate. So we are not, when we make them feel better and we make their lab values look better, we're not curing them. The disease has done the damage. In acute kidney failure, if kidney cells are killed off, we don't get them back. So do we have a cure if we get those levels back down? Yes and no. We're not regenerating what we've lost, but we are making them feel better and we're getting their lab values down. So, okay. There's more on my next pit. Yes, there's a lot more. All right. So, um, so many people think that chronic kidney failure or chronic renal failure means that the kidneys have stopped working and are not making urine, and that's not the case. They are still making urine. They're just not separating the waste products from the water correctly. Um, okay. All right. Since kidney tissue cannot be regenerated if destroyed, the kidneys have a large amount of reserve capacity to perform their various function. And at least two thirds of the kidney must be dysfunctional before any clinical signs are seen. So that's again, why it's so important that we're doing monitoring lab work. And we'll talk about the staging of the disease later in the week. So a lot of times the destruction has been going on by the time you're seeing symptoms, the destruction has been going on for months to years without you realizing it. In uh, Chinese medicine, and we're not gonna talk about that too much this week, but in Chinese medicine, uh, for humans, it is said that we are born with 100 years of life in our kidneys. And if we take good care of our body and our kidneys and all of our organ systems, we will get our 100 years of life. No one has defined what that length of time is for our dogs and cats. I'd like to think that it's 30 years, um, but we certainly are not doing a good job at getting to that point with our animals. Um, so in many cases, chronic kidney disease is associated with aging and in simple terms can be considered to be the wearing out of kidney tissues. The age of onset, unfortunately, is also often related to the size of the dog. For most small dogs, the signs of kidney disease are seen at about 10 to 14 years of age, and it's about the same for the kitty cats. 
And for large dogs, we have a shorter lifespan. So um, kidney failure can start as early as seven years of age just from the organ starting to wear out. So it's critically important that we do everything we can to support kidney function, which means uh, species appropriate diets, high moisture in the diet. Again, we'll talk about that later in the week. So we want to talk about some things that cause damage to the kidneys. Um, and like I said, toxins are, are high on the list for acute kidney failure. So things that um, damage the kidney filters are basically called glomerular disease. The glomerulus is uh, where the little nephrons, it's kind of the functional unit of the kidney. Um, so uh, it can be damaged by disease like Lyme disease. Lyme nephritis is a big deal. We used to see a ton of it and it's because there are immune complexes, antibodies and antigens that get together. They form a large uh, unit that kind of lodges in the kidney tubules in the glomerulus and causes inflammatory disease. And that's what the nephritis is. It basically means uh, inflammation of the kidneys. So Lyme disease is a big deal. Certainly uh, cancers can cause um, uh, kidney failure as well. Lymphoma of the kidneys, like I talked about with the kitty cats. We, I've seen hemangiosarcoma of the kidneys and I've seen primary kidney uh, cancers from the kidney cells. In kitty cats, uh, FIP, feline leukemia, feline AIDS definitely will predispose them to forming cancers in their kidneys. Uh, I had an FIV positive cat that was the very first cat I ever owned. He died from lymphoma that started in his throat and ended in his kidneys and caused kidney failure. Damage to the kidney filters can also occur from high blood pressure. So kitty cats with um, hyperthyroidism, they will have secondary high blood pressure. Dogs with Cushing's disease will have secondary high blood pressure. Animals that are, are on chronic steroids will have high blood pressure. And that constant high blood pressure against the, the kidney functional unit, the glomerulus, will cause damage and failure of those, those functional units. Um, so I talked about infection. Uh, so besides things like Lyme disease and the viral diseases in kitty cats, we can also have things like leptospirosis. We can have bacterial infections, E. coli, uh, that can damage the kidney tissue as well. Um, so that's why a urine culture is really, really critical if your animal comes up with high kidney values. Kidney stones. Kidney stones are almost always oxalates if they're in the kidneys. If they're in the bladder, that's a different story. But kidney stones that form in the kidneys are generally oxalate stones. They are not really dissolvable. Um, they are also rarely removed. I think I only ever had one patient who had to have kidney stones removed, and that was because they had caused an obstruction, which caused the kidney to basically back up with urine, get very big, um, and they had no choice other than to get that stone out of the way. But very commonly, we will see stones on x-ray or on ultrasound that we had no idea that they were there. So sometimes if you're seeing, uh, if you're getting red blood cells in the urine and it's a free catch, sometimes that can be because we've got some stones that are lodged up in the kidneys. And in general, if they're small and they're not obstructive, they're left in place. Um, so kidney blockage, uh, whether it's uh, urethra or ureter, if there's an obstruction somewhere in the urinary tract so the urine cannot get out, so the blocked kitty cats or uh, animals who have stones that are causing an obstruction, that will cause uh, a pressure backup on the kidneys and that will put them into kidney failure. This is one of those times, particularly, um, well, dogs or cats, but when they have a, an obstruction and the obstruction is in place for less than 48 hours, they will come in with horrible... Um, kidney values, BUN, creatinine, and when we relieve that obstruction, it takes the pressure off the kidneys and they will return back to um, normal pre-obstructive values. So uh, that is a huge veterinary emergency. If you have an animal who's trying to urinate and is not successful in urinating, get them in somewhere immediately. Um, so again, we can have a kidney blockage. So the, the blockage could be up further. It could be up at the ureters or actually in the kidney itself at the outflow. Um, okay, uh, leptospirosis I talked about, toxins we talked about, 
Um, ah, all right, so we're talking about some more toxins here. Grapes, raisins, antifreeze, we talked about certain commercial jerky treat products. So we went through for 12 years, the FDA supposedly was investigating chicken jerky treats from China that were causing uh, kidney failure in dogs. And after 12 years, the FDA closed the investigation with no answers. We have no idea. So my recommendation is don't buy any treats that are coming from overseas, from particularly from China, but these jerky treats that are coming in from other countries, we, we don't know what's going on with them. And since we can't find the toxic principle, the best thing to do is just avoid them. Um, so over-the-counter medications, aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, so ibuprofen, uh, naproxen, those over-the-counter drugs, Tylenol, those are, those are no-go for cats and dogs, particularly for cats, but do not use those over-the-counter medications. I saw many animals in practice who went into kidney failure for, um, because the owners were giving them over-the-counter medications, so absolutely avoid that. Uh, prescribed medications, a lot of the human prescription medications, do not leave them out where your animals can get into them because uh, it doesn't take much of our medication to cause a kidney failure problem in our pets. Um, venoms, pesticides, heavy metals, um, and we know, we know that our animals like to lick stuff, eat stuff, roll in stuff, or bathe in stuff. <laughs> and so that definitely puts them at higher risk because they're having that chronic exposure that we might get a small amount of exposure, but they are you know, in closer contact and they're licking all of that off of their bodies. Um, okay, what else we got here? Cancer, we talked about cancer. Um, so kidney cancer is not very common. Uh, it's less common in dogs than it is in cats and in kitty cats it's almost always a lymphoma or lymphosarcoma. Um, and like I said, they can live with one kidney. So if we have cancer in one kidney, we could remove that one. I had to do that a few times for animals with cancer in their kidneys uh, and they did fine with the other kidney. Um, Protein issues like amyloidosis, we don't see it very commonly. It's, I think it's more common in humans than it is in dogs and cats, but we can see it. Um, but we do have genetic predisposition for kidney disease uh, in certain animals. In kitty cats, it, genetic predisposition for amyloidosis uh, in Abyssinian, Siamese, and Oriental short-haired cats. Um, and then certainly polycystic kidney disease, we can see that in dogs or cats. Um, and again, Abyssinians and Persians are at the top of the list for that. As far as the dogs, I don't know if we have a specific list of breeds that are more prone to it. I've seen it in a lot of different breeds and I think we're seeing it more than we used to. And maybe that's just because our diagnostics are better than they used to be, I don't know. Um, but we are seeing just a ton of kidney disease. So, um, so those are some of the things that we need to watch for and be very vigilant with our animals as far as what we're giving them, what we expose them to. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about the symptoms and more about diagnosis, specific tests that are used. Wednesday we're gonna talk about staging the kidney disease. Um, and then Thursday, we're going to talk about treatment and supplementation. And Friday, we will talk about feeding our pets with kidney disease, which I know is a, a hot topic for a lot of people. And I know a lot of people struggle with that. And um, frankly, we're struggling with the same thing with Stewie, Stuart, because I made him a beautiful uh, slow cooker stew the other night. And he went, Bleh. Now, this morning, he ate it fine. So, um, yeah. That's, that's the fun of kidney disease. Okay, hopefully you're all getting some good information out of this and um, I do believe that there are going to be some downloads and uh, handouts throughout the week where you can get some recipes, see some specific videos, there's uh, more information coming throughout the week. it could be queued up tomorrow. I had it queued up and it disappeared. <laughs> Such is life. <laughs>